SFUSD. That's the place to be. SFUSD. Bienvenidos at the Juan Ying. SFUSD. Everyone come and see. SFUSD. Join our family. Hello, scientists. We are already halfway through our week of learning. Can you believe it? Me neither. It's going by so fast because we have such a short week together. But we still have a lot to learn, though. Do you remember what question we're trying to answer? Yes, we're trying to answer the question, what do plants and animals need to do to survive? I told you about the crab and shrimp video that I watched, which was what really launched this investigation. And I wanted to see if any of my Cientificos used their uh, sense of sight yesterday to notice a mistake on our entry. I'll give you a clue. It's in the blue area. Yeah, I didn't write the date correctly. I was so hung up on our learning from last week that I wrote the date from then. So yesterday was not February 11th. Since today is the 17th, now I take away one, yesterday was the 16th. So I'm just gonna add a little belly, cause the number six kinda could look like this. So I'm gonna add a little hat and a little belly on the bottom. Oh, I hope it's okay I made a mistake. Well, you know, I think it is okay. Scientists make mistakes. As long as we fix them, it's all right. I think we're ready to continue. So today, I wanted to share some research as well as some images that might help us better understand how animals and plants survive. So, I was doing some research out of a reference book, and that's a special kind of nonfiction book, and found out about some pretty interesting defenses. Let's see what I learned. I learned about four main defenses that plants and animals can have. They are camouflage, shells or armor, spikes or spines, and poison or venom. <gasps> Ooh. So some of you need to learn what these words mean, and that's a great idea. Let's take some time to understand our new scientific vocabulary. Camouflage is when a living thing is hard to see because its color matches its surroundings. We're going to show a picture on the screen of different animals and plants using camouflage. Can you see them? That was a bit challenging. I was able to see some living things, though. The next defense, shells or armor, are really hard, which makes it difficult to bite through. Let's check out some images on the screen and see if you recognize any of the living things that have shells or armor. Did you see the crab? I don't think any shrimp would survive against that. The next defense that I learned about was spikes or spines. Do I need to explain this defense? <laughs> I didn't think so. But let's check out some living things with these defenses. Look at the pictures. I, just imagining all those sharp things made me cringe. <laughs> the last defense that I learned about was poison or venom. And I have my notes. Uh -huh. So when a living thing is poisonous, you have to eat it to get a reaction. And if a living thing is venomous, it has to bite you to give you a reaction. I think I got that right. <laughs> so let's look at some examples of poisonous or venomous living things. Hmm, I just realized I don't have any of these defenses. I wonder what defenses humans have. Maybe we'll get to answer that by the end of the week. Now, I was thinking we could look at some more images of plants and animals and try to determine what defense it has. Do you think that's something you can do? <laughs> I think so too. All you need for this activity is your sense of sight and your scientific mind, which I think you always bring. The four defenses we're trying to determine right now with these animals are camouflage, shells and armor, spikes and venom, or spikes and spines, and poison and venom. My bad scientists.
Let's get started by checking out this picture of some crabs. What defense do you see on them? <gasps> ah, yes, I agree. We know from when we learned about Dungeness crabs that they have a hard shell. So this would go with the armor defense. Buen trabajo, great job. Let's look at our next living thing. Ooh, my favorite plant, a cactus. What defense were you able to see on the cactus? Mmm, I saw those spikes too. Have any of you actually touched a cactus? Me too, it is not a great feeling. So let's continue. Next, you'll see an insect in a plant. Tell me what defense you can see. Hmm, some of you heard my little clue. This insect is using camouflage. I had a hard time seeing it the first time I looked at it. Let's check out the last image I have. This one shows a scorpion. What defense do you think a scorpion has? Some of you knew scorpions are venomous. If they get you with their needlepoint tail, not only will it hurt, but you will get a serious reaction. I bet animals really try to stay far away from them. Well, great job today, scientists. We learned a lot about animal and plant defenses, and these defenses can make it hard for plants and animals to be seen or get eaten. Interesting. I feel like we're a lot closer to answering our questions. Well, which defenses were new to you? Oh, cool. These offenses finally taught me the difference between poisonous and venomous. I can't wait to continue exploring tomorrow. Thank you for learning with me and please enjoy the rest of the show. Hello, my name is Maestra Luna Vasquez. Today, we are going to do a song titled The Termite Lady. Hmm, termites are little insects that eat wood. Margaret Collins was an African-American scientist and she studied, she studied a lot because after she went to high school, she went to college. And after she went to college, she got her graduate degree in the city of Chicago. We are going to do a song about Margaret Collins in the blues style. And Chicago is known for the blues. Here we go. Dr. Margaret Collins was a black woman scientist. Dr. Margaret Collins was a black woman scientist. She was checking out books from the library when she was just study. She discovered 
a new termite. Her nickname was the Termite Lady. She was a mom and a civil rights leader. Oh yeah, she was a mom and a civil rights leader. I hope you enjoyed that blues song about Margaret Collins, an African-American scientist. Hi, my name is Amisha Arthur. I am the author of several books. One, Brown Boy, Brown Boy, What Can You Be? Two is Matthew Meditates right here behind me. Uh, three is Affirmations for Brown Girls. And the fourth is one that I want to read to you today. It's called Benjamin the Brave. A story about anxiety. Hi, my name is Benjamin. I am seven years old. I am super smart. I'm a big brother. I have lots of friends. I love soccer, robots, and playing the drums. I'm pretty good at all those things. But there's one thing I'm not so good at. Sometimes when things are different or new, I get scared and really nervous and cannot calm down. Sometimes I feel afraid when I think of scary things, even when they are not around. My heart beats faster. I start sweating on my hands and I breathe really fast. I call my mom when this happens, but she says there's nothing to fear. I'm not so sure. Sometimes I cry because my mind won't stop thinking about frightening things. I just don't know how to stop the worrying and frightening thoughts. My mom says I worry and become frightened and have a hard time calming down because of something called anxiety. Mom says anxiety makes little troubles seem big. Today, I'm worried about my dentist appointment tomorrow. I can't think of anything else. I'm freaking out. What if he gives me a shot? What if all my teeth fall out? What if I get in trouble because I haven't brushed my teeth properly? What if he's mean? What if mom gets mad at me for having a cavity? What if, huh? I never saw this before. The biggest monsters, he beat them all, fought brave and stood tall. No scary beast could ever defeat the greatest hero to walk on two feet. Just picture him in your mind and stand tall without doubt. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Soon you will see you have nothing to fear because the bravest hero stands with you right here. I did the hero pose and sucked in air through my nose and out through my mouth. 10 times. To tell you the truth, I thought something amazing was going to happen. I looked around and thought maybe a hero would appear or something, but he didn't. I felt silly and kind of disappointed. Then I caught a glimpse of my reflection in the mirror. I was the hero. It was the coolest feeling ever. I felt calm and brave and safe. 
I stayed like that, playing till dinner time. I didn't even think about the dentist. The next day though, was another story. I had to go to the dentist. I was super frightened. I like the dentist. He's usually really nice and gives me toys when the checkup is complete, but going to the dentist still scares me. What do you think's gonna happen to Benjamin at the dentist? Do you think he'll remember how to feel calm and brave and safe? Well, I invite you to check out the rest of the book to see what happens. Thank you for spending this time with me. Bye. Hi, everyone. My name is Mr. Manolo. Y yo soy Maestra Jessica. And we're here with San Francisco Ballet's DIS, Dis program. program. Dance in schools and community. Aunque no estamos en las escuelas, podemos bailar juntos en nuestras casas. Fall and winter is such a wonderful time of the year, filled with reflection, change, and transitions. Today, me and Mr. Manolo went on a nature walk around our neighborhood. Do you want to see some of the cool things that we found? We really enjoyed looking at all of the trees around us. Let's look at a few of the things that we picked up from our trees. We picked up seeds. Semillas. We picked up branches. Pine cones. And leaves. leaves. Oh, yes. All of these elements of trees are really important because it really shows the different stages on how they grow. Would you like to explore how the trees grow? Let's do it. We can really use the parts of the tree, like the leaves, the seeds, maybe the branches, and also the pine cones to really guide our movement as we dance. Come on. Let's start with our seeds. Some seeds are really big. And other seeds are really tiny. But just because they're different sizes when they first get planted into the ground doesn't determine how big the tree is going to grow. All it needs is a very nurturing and safe environment and really good soil so it can grow healthy and strong. Let's dance like big seeds and small seeds. Since me and Mr. Manolo are different sized seeds, we're gonna do the opposite of what the other person does. So if I make myself into a big strong seed, Mr. Manolo is gonna turn into a small soft seed. And then when I go small, he's gonna go big. Let's try with a friend, are you ready? Okay. Take a big deep breath in. <sighs> Choose which seat you want to be. And let's go. Good job again. Make yourself big. Make yourself small. Opposite of your friend and small. Good, and come back into your resting position. That was really good. I love how we are different people and different seeds, but we can also be in the same space together. That's really awesome. For this activity, we're going to learn the way that branches move on trees. Para esta actividad, nosotros vamos a explorar cómo las ramas de un árbol se mueven. Usually, branches extend super far so that they can grab all the energy from the sun. But during fall and winter, the days get a little bit shorter. So in order to save energy, the trees let go of their leaves and branches. We're gonna explore the way that branches crack as they fall. So everybody, put your arms out and extend as wide as possible. And we're gonna crack from certain parts of our bodies. We're gonna start with our wrists. Let's try our wrists and go. Nice. The next one, other wrist. Let's do our elbow. Let's do our other elbow. Now let's do our shoulders. Let's do our head. Oh, nice. Let's do the other side. Wonderful. Now what I want everyone to do is 
take one hand, put it on a body part, and we're gonna move it with a crack, our chest. Let's do our waist. Let's do our waist the other side. Let's do our head again. Let's do our chest. Let's do our back. Let's do our feet. Let's do our other foot. And then fall down. Speaking of falling, have you ever seen a leaf fall to the ground? And a pine cone fall to the ground? What do you think is the difference? Well, let's test it out. I'm going to drop a leaf. And I'm going to drop a pine cone. We're going to do it at the same time. Let's see what the difference is. Ready? One, two, three. Wow, the pine cone definitely fell a lot faster than the leaf did. And I noticed that the leaf went a little bit slower. Hmm, I have an idea. Let's pretend like we are a leaf falling a little bit slow down to the ground. After that, we'll fall like strong, heavy pine cones. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Whoa, I'm floating in the air, slowly going down to the ground, twirling in the wind. I'm almost to the ground. Now we're going to fall like we are some heavy pine cones. Now even though we're falling a little bit faster and a little bit stronger, we still want to make sure we're safe. So make sure you're in a safe environment so that if you fall, you can catch yourself without hurting yourself. Okay. One, two, three. And pop. Uno, dos, tres. Pop. One, two, three. Pop. Uno, dos, tres. Pop. Wow, qué divertido era explorar la manera que diferentes partes del árbol se mueven. Isn't it amazing how we can use different parts of a tree as inspiration for our dance and movement? Ahora, yo puedo con baile y movimiento explorar la manera que los árboles cambian durante el año, como nosotros. Gracias para bailar con nosotros hoy. We had so much fun with you. Again, my name is Miss Jessica. Y yo soy Señor Manolo. Y nos, nos vemos, vemos la, la próxima. próxima. Hello, boys and girls. I'm Mrs. Marshall. Happy Black History Month! This month's theme, this year's theme, talks about family. Uh, your mom and dad, grandma and grandpa. In this picture here, this is a picture of my family. But I'm not in it, I must have been taking the picture. There are my two daughters, my son, and we're holding uh, my first grandson. This picture is 10 years old because he's now 10 years old and in the fifth grade. He lives in Virginia. Virginia is near the state capital in Washington, D.C. So when you go home tonight, talk to mom and dad or grandma and grandpa. I interview them. So which state were you born in? Did they come from Texas or Alabama? I came to California from Tennessee about 50 years ago. You can make a family tree from your grandma and grandpa, your mom and dad, all your sisters and brothers and aunties and uncles. It's called a family tree. So make that and show it to your teacher. Can you do that? Thank you so much. Bye-bye. There's a whole new day that's still ahead to shine. Hi, buddies. It's Teacher Maggie, and this is Audrey. Audrey. And today we're going to talk about rainbows and do a stretch and a breath that makes us think of rainbows. So last time we were with you, we talked about a rainstorm. And sometimes when the sun comes out, we get lucky enough to see a rainbow, but we can also pretend to make our own rainbows, can't we? Okay, so here's what you're gonna do. Take your legs out wide. I'm gonna go behind Audrey so we have room there. Take your feet out nice and wide. They can be a big stretch or it can be a smaller stretch. So you don't have to go too wide if you don't want to. And you're gonna take out your two paint brushes. Do you have them? Invisible paint brushes. And we're gonna get our paint. And should we do all the rainbow colors today? Okay, so what do we start with? Red. Start with red. So let's start at one foot and you're gonna paint your red all the way up and over to one foot. 
and then up and over to the other side. What color next? Orange, up and over. How high can your rainbow go? Up and back. We know what's next, yellow. Big, big stretch, over and yellow goes back. How about next? Green, all the way up with your green. We get to paint a double rainbow, right? Two brushes, there's your green. What's next? Blue rainbow, up and over. And up and back. Now we've got purple, up and over. Up and back. Let's add some pink because we always need pink, right? <laughs> We're in all pink today. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and you know what else I like to add? Sparkles! So get your fingers going, add some sparkles all the way up. And now you have this amazing rainbow up above you. Back it up. Now bring your knees in and take a seat on your feet. Sit on your knees. Okay, good. So one more thing about a rainbow, and that's what that's, this one is called a rainbow breath. So what you're gonna do is take two fingers from your hands and bring them over to one shoulder. And for this rainbow, we're gonna make a rainbow right up and over our head. So you're gonna take a big breath in and breathe out and go to the other shoulder. Again, make all those colors all the way over your head. Big breath in and big breath out. Should we do one more? Big breath in, rainbow up and over your head and big breath out. So anytime you need a little bit of extra color or energy in your day, you can draw your little rainbow over your head and take it with you wherever you go. Good job, buddies. We'll see you next time. Hello, I'm Superintendent Dr. Vincent Matthews of the San Francisco Unified School District. It made me so happy to spend time with you today. I hope you had fun too. What did you make on the show today? Submit your content here using the QR code or go to bit.ly B-I-T dot L-Y backslash S-F-U-S-D. Yes, Y E S. And watch all of our episodes at SFUSD dot EDU backslash SF Loves Learning. And now it's time to say goodbye. So let's sing our goodbye song. For this song, you have to use your whole body. Will you sing it with me? Are you ready? Wave high, wave low. For now, it's time to go. Wave your elbows, wave your toes, wave your tongue and wave your nose. Wave your knees, wave your lips. Blow a kiss with your fingertips. Wave your ears, wave your hair, wave your belly and wave your derriere. Wave your chin, wave your eye, for now it's time to say goodbye. Bye-bye. SFUSD, that's the place to be. SFUSD, bienvenidos a Tijuanying. SFUSD, everyone come and see. SFUSD, join our family. S is for student.